<laughs> okay, our next inductee. I'm very pleased to be able to offer my remarks for this young man as well, as we induct him into the White Wallington High School Athletic Hall of Fame. But honestly, what, what should have been probably the easiest induction speech for me to write was the most difficult, uh, for obvious reasons. Um, we all knew David would one day, well I knew at least, David would one day be inducted into this Athletic Hall of Fame, uh, but nobody could have guessed it would have been like this. Um, he and I talked about this possibility many times over the course of his career and after he had graduated from Wallington, um, we always thought about how it would be, and I, obviously none of us either, neither, neither of us ever guessed it would be like this. Um, so it's sad when I first realized that I can't look out into the audience and see his smiling face. Um, it's difficult to be up and talk about somebody in a situation like that. But I know in, in looking at the community that I just spoke to you about, that many of the people, all the people that David played for, the family that he loved so much, the, the players that he loved playing with, um, the community members, they just love being around, and the community has just loved so much, is all here tonight, and they're here in abundance. So when I look out at you, I'm going to see David, and I know he's here in spirit and, and in your memories, too, in some respect with all of you here. So um, let's just move forward with that. Uh, David was a three-sport athlete, uh, football, track, and basketball. Uh, he was excellent at everything he did. I'm going to give you some stories about him. I'm going to talk to you about his statistics, um, but we all know who the man was. We'll start with track, um, and we're here to celebrate what he was to Wellington Athletics and, and all of his sports, and track was one of them. He won 11 varsity awards, uh, varsity letters rather, uh, in the course of his four years in high school. I was very fortunate, very, very fortunate to be the coach for eight of those varsity sports. Um, and as a track, the track athlete for me, he had some tremendous talent. Uh, much has been made of this Superman nickname that he has, um, but let me tell you a quick story about how that actually started. Um, it's kind of morphed and become so many different things, right, Barbara? Um, and that's kind of cool too. Um, but when he was a freshman uh, on the track team, we had a decent team, but we're, we're playing a dual meet with, uh, I think it was Hasbro Kites and St. Mary's, and Hasbro Kites, as usual, was just absolutely destroying us as they destroy everybody. But we were very tight with St. Mary's, we're very close in the meet, and uh, for David, it was very important for him to get a varsity left in any sport. He, you know, he always seeked to get that end result, and for him, the end result was, as a freshman, to, to earn a varsity letter. So I knew that was always hanging over his head. It was late in the season. I don't know if it was the last meet of the season, but it was close to it. Um, and I told him he had just run the 200-meter dash, uh, didn't place, but, but still um, had an opportunity to compete there. And the next event was the two-mile, and I saw that St. Mary's only had one kid on the track the two-mile. <laughs> and I said, if I can get two kids out there, that I can just steal some points because they're not going to fill those slots. And I said, Dave, you just have to beat one kid in the two mile. Now, he's not a distance runner, he's a sprinter. Uh, but he said, am I going to get my varsity letter if I do this? I said, if you beat one St. Mary's kid, you got it. You're going you're gonna to do it. So he's running, and eight, mile, eight, eight laps around the track is a two mile race or a 3,200 meter race. Um, so after the fourth lap, he's, at the end of the fourth lap, he's sprinting into the finish line. And he sees me, I'm going like this, four more. You got four more laps to go. And his eyes just bugged out of his head. He somehow continued and made it through, and he, and he beat that St. Mary's kid. Uh, and we got the one point, and we were able to win the meet. It's you know, a storybook season, I guess, for Wallington Track. And he meets me on the finish line, and he's got hands on his knees, and he's breathing heavy. And he says, did, did I get my letter? Said, you got it. You got it. And he was so happy, he vomited all over my shoes. I think I was one of the officials that was standing there. And that's what I started calling him Superman. Because, because after that race, and after vomiting all over everything, we had the 4x4 four four relay. And that was one of his events, too. He just turned around, picked up the baton, and got on the starting line. So he, he was that special kind of an athlete uh, in all of his sports. But that's just a quick little track story. And I wanted to just give some history behind the Superman story. I don't know where it's gone from there, but it's become many other things besides that. But that's kind of where it, where it all started. Um, so he had a terrific career in track. Um, as he got older and stopped vomiting all over the place, I guess, um, his, his, uh, his track career took him many places. Uh, he was part of a 4x400 and a 4x100 relay team that went to the Penn Relays in his senior year. And that's the only team that we've ever taken from Wallington to the Penn Relays. And that's quite an accomplishment for him and for his teammates at that time. And I know he was very, very proud of it. He was the one that was pushing me to, to do it and, and check in our times to make sure that we would be at least making a decent show when we finished actually fourth in our heat, which was, was very good. We beat every team in our league that happened to be in that heat as well. Um, David also had many accomplishments in other areas of athletics as well. He was a basketball player as well. Um, now, if you ask David 
And if he were to tell you, he'd say, no, I wasn't really a basketball player, I played basketball. And to him there was a difference, but I know to his coaches, to Charlie, um, there was no difference in that. And, and David was what you call a role player out there. And I used to tease him all the time. I said, Dave, you never shoot the ball. And he never did, right? Charlie, he would never take a shot. And Charlie would get on and teach, you gotta shoot. You, you can shoot, you can do it. But Dave knew that was not his role. And he told me that many times. He goes, that's not my role. I'm not a, I don't shoot the ball. I play defense. I go after every ball that's rolling out of bounds, and that's what I do. I hustle out there. And, and he knew it. That was his role. And that's kind of what Charlie needed him to do on his basketball team. And that's, that was what he did, and, and he enjoyed doing that. That was his contribution. But he was also a leader on that team as well, a guy that, that uh, the coaches and the other players looked to uh, as their spark plug. Was he a captain for you too, Charlie? Yeah, I figured that too. All right, because of his leadership skills. He, he had that ability, that innate ability that you don't quite find in many athletes. And when you do find it, it's just such a rare gem. Uh, and David had it, and he had it in abundance. He was very tough, he was tenacious, and just a fantastic leader in basketball. But of course, all of us here, certainly me as his, as his football coach, we recognize his talents on the football field. And when you look in the uh, journal, you see all these records for football. And I want to talk about those for a few moments. But I, I can honestly say that the, the four years that I was David's coach were the best four years, the best four years of my life in coaching. Um, and I coached for about 21 years of varsity athletics. Um, those were my best four years. And it's not because of wins and losses. It has absolutely nothing to do with that, certainly, because I won more games other years than, than the four years where I had David. But it's because I had players like David um, who were just so selfless and so generous to me as their coach uh, that I could not, not want to be there for them. Um, his preparation for football never ended, David. Absolutely never ended. He would ask me on a Friday if I was going to be in the weight room on Sunday. I say, Dave, I go to church on Sunday, it's my only day not to do anything, and I don't. And he'd look down, he'd pout, and he'd say, Jesus wants me to be in the weight room on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd be in the weight room on Sunday with David and nobody else, and just so he can get his 45-minute workout in and go home. He was always very appreciative of it. Um, but when you have an athlete like that, and many of you in the room are coaches, you cannot say no to them. You can't. Because they're the reason that you come to practice every day. When you have the 0-10 season, you're looking for somebody. You're looking for a Kareem Mahmoud. You're looking for a David Popek to keep you around. And those are the ones that keep you doing it. Because certainly not for the wins and losses and not for the lack of accolades. It's, it's, it's for the people that, that you're around. And his statistics and accomplishments were absolutely legendary in football. Um, and you can see that in your journals. But what's perhaps the most amazing thing that will not show up in those journals is that David is a varsity athlete, our all-time leading rusher, 3,000 some odd yards, all-time leading rusher, won a total of eight games in his varsity career. Eight wins is all he had. Um, so what does that tell you about the kind of player that he was? And even more importantly, what does that tell you about the kind of character that he had? that he could persevere against very adverse situations, very adverse circumstances um, to achieve as much as he did. To gain 3,400 and something yards as a player in, in football, most people would think you had a heck of a team around you. Um, and that wasn't always the case. He didn't have bad teams around him, but he didn't have complete teams around him. Maybe we could run the ball, we couldn't throw the ball. And then the next week we could throw the ball, we couldn't run it. Uh, but David was always a part of that, and he was always our focal point. And I think it's just a true testament to him, the fact that he only won eight varsity games, and he accomplished as much as he did in a record that still stands today. Um, so he broke the single season rushing record with 1,311 yards, and still holds that career record with, I have it here now, 3,442 yards. Um, and all that came in just a few wins, and in games where we, quite honestly, were sometimes outmatched. So David was our team for much of the time that he played for us. Um, he was our best player, he was our toughest competitor, uh, and our biggest cheerleader at times. Uh, he was a rare gem in his accomplishments as a football player, and he was legendary for us. And what was also legendary for David was his antics in the locker room. <laughs> I have to talk about that for a second. Sometimes they were in varying states of undress. <laughs> I won't get into here, but for those of you who did play with him, you know, that was something special about David, the way he could kid around with his friends too and still be the leader that he was on the football field. He wasn't just a cut up, he was somebody that could really take it to you as well. Um, and I know his friends appreciated that as much as they appreciate everything else that he brought to the game. Um, so his statistics were astronomical, certainly worthy of this honor, um, but the most telling statement why I think he deserves this over all things is, is his love for Wallington High School. For the teachers in the building, his friends, his coaches, um, 
And that's what makes him so worthy. He was so unique in that respect, and he brought something very special to our community that we do miss dearly right now, and certainly to Washington High School athletics. Uh, his one regret uh, was that he had never won a championship at Wallington. Um, he told me that many times, that, that he always wished that he had a championship at Wallington or any championship. And fortunately, at TCNJ, he did get a championship as a football player there, and he was very, very proud of it. But I will tell you this, when I first saw him after, first time I saw him after he won that championship, he had his ring on. Of course, I wanted to see the championship ring, and I told him how proud I was and how much he deserved to have something like that because of all the players that I had ever coached, um, I couldn't think of anyone that deserved to have a championship more than David did. Um, and the first thing I can honestly tell you that he said was, it doesn't have a W on it. Uh. And that, that was the truth. That's what he said to me. That was more important to him. If he had gotten one in Wellington, everything else would not have mattered for him. So for that reason alone, I'm very proud to induct David Popek Jr. into the Wellington High School Athletic Hall of Fame. number that his brother had at GCNJ. So they won. <laughs> On behalf of my son, David Popek Jr., I would like to congratulate all the 2013 inductees and thank the induction committee for this honor. I know for a fact how important this induction would be to David. From a Popek point of view, no matter where you move in life, it all goes back to Wallington, to being a bleed blue panther, a member of a small school community that creates bonds of friendship, love, and loyalty that last a lifetime and beyond. David had many achievements in his short 25 years of life, including a truly successful and accomplished high school career. He went on to graduate from the College of New Jersey in four years with both a major and a minor. While at TCNJ, he was not only a good student, but also an athlete and a Sigma Pi brother. Shortly after college, he applied and was accepted into the Federal Air Marshal Service, a select group of men and women committed to protecting the innocent against the evils of terrorism. Only the bravest of brave and the noblest of heart sign up for this type of job. David's life was exciting, his future was boundless, and he was living his dream. But as we know, God had other plans for David. There is no doubt in my mind that David is standing beside us all here tonight. Despite all of his accomplishments, being inducted into the Wellington Athletic Hall of Fame was achievement he hoped for. In March of 2012, the Hall of Fame came up in a conversation between David and I. Hey mom, I've been thinking, Wellington hasn't had a Hall of Fame induction in a long time. When do you think they'll have another one? I'm eligible now. I've been out of high school over four years. When they do, do you think they will consider me? To our bleed blue panther in heaven, congratulations on your induction, an honor you've truly earned and deserved. On behalf of my family, I would like to thank all of David's coaches, teachers, teammates, advisors, school administration, coworkers, and family for the love, respect, and support you have shown for David and his family this past year. I believe the outpour of love and respect is a reflection on how David lived his life, and I hope that his example continues to encourage people to live with compassion and integrity. I will close by reading to you a message left on David's memorial page from a fellow Wallington High School classmate. He wrote, Due to my lack of attendance throughout my grammar and high school years, I was sort of an outcast. People tended to shy away from me. I always felt that it was because they didn't know if I'd be worth getting to know. That being said, Dave was an exception. 
Whenever I was able to go to school, Dave was friendly to me. Didn't matter that I stuck out from everyone else. Didn't matter that I was sick so often. I will be forever grateful for that kindness, that acceptance without restraint. To judge Dave based on his accomplishments alone is to sell him way short. He was the guy who was genuinely friendly to every person he met. He treated everyone like his equal. Dave was an example to all around him while I knew him. I am no longer ashamed to admit that I was very envious of him. I yearned for the life he had that I couldn't. Looking back, I wholeheartedly believe that had I just asked him, he'd have done whatever he could to help me achieve the same level of greatness that he had attained. Thank you for being that the way you were. Don't know if I'd have lived through high school without you and your hellos, as opposed to the silent stares that cut me like knives from so many others. The Buddhists believe in reincarnation, in a way, not because of a soul, like, other, like some religions, but because of the karmic activity and the wheels that activity, whether good or bad, set in motion. David was not a pebble in a pond that made tiny ripples that affected some things a little. He was that fat kid that cannonballs into your pool and makes the kind of ripples that affect everything in the pool and soaks everything in a 25-foot radius. David affected everyone around him, intentionally or not, knowingly or not. The waves that Dave caused will not disappear from this earth. It is in these karmic waves that Dave will live on forever. In this I agree with a lot of people that there will never be another David Popek, but not for the same reason. There will not be another David Popek because this one will never be gone. You will be missed dearly, my friend. Now and forever. Rest in peace, David Kolpak. Thank you. That's it for our inductees. Congratulations to everyone. Thank you, Barbara. And uh, I know you have a lot of family and supporters here. Thank all of you for coming on David's memory. And uh, for everyone else, uh, thank you very much for coming to support your family and friends and, and fellow athletes. We have some of our, as I mentioned earlier, charter inductees here who come back each time as part of the family of Wallington High School Athletic Hall of Fame inductees and Hall of Fame members. Glad to see all of you back here again. Um, I thank all of you, and it, it's true about what people say about Wallington. I, I mean, I've been, I don't live in Wallington, live in another town, active in another town, worked in another town for a while, and worked here most of the time, but uh, it's a pretty cool place. So uh, we want to thank all of you again, thank the committee again. Oh, the 50-50, I thought we just read it. <laughs> At least we have half the people left. You, 